Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, this is Nandita, and today we're talking about quant. Quant or quantitative reasoning is just another fancy name for maths. According to ETS, the objective of the GRE quant section is to test your basic mathematical skills. And they really do mean basic. Also, the GRE being an uh, American exam, the quant section is, uh, the quant questions are set according to the American standard of maths. So you can imagine that for an Indian student, especially for an engineering student, it can be almost laughably easy. To describe it in Indian terms, uh, the difficulty level would be around what the basics of the concepts that you learnt in uh, your 9th or 10th standard. However, just because it is so easy for us as Indian students doesn't mean that you should completely discount the quant section from your uh, preparation schedule. Quant is the one section that you've actually got a good chance of scoring full marks in. Like the verbal section, the quant section is also scored out of 170 and you might encounter it either two times or three times uh, if your experimental uh, happens to be quant. Plenty of people score 170 in quant and that's what you should aim for. Now I scored 165 in my quant uh, when I gave my GRE, which is a decent score as it is. However, just to give you a comparison of the percentiles and the difficulty levels of both quant and verbal sections, my 166 uh, score in the verbal section was in the 97th percentile, whereas my 165 in quant, which was only one mark less, uh, was in the 88th percentile. Your quant score can be really important for your application process, especially if you're looking to go into a STEM field. Uh, so the minimum acceptable score would be around 162 for quant. But I'll say it again, aim to score full. So there are four different types of uh, questions asked in the quant section. The first is the quantitative comparison type. You're given two quantities A and B, usually in the form of expressions, and you're asked to compare both of them. So there's four options for every question of this kind. Uh, either A is greater than B, B is greater than A, A and B are equal, or that you can't determine the relationship uh, between the two with the information given. So these options remain the exact same for every question of uh, com quantitative comparison. So make sure you really, you're really familiar with them and that you know which is which. The second question type is multiple choice questions where there's only one correct option. The third question type is multiple choice questions where there's one or more uh, correct answers. Now remember that in this kind of question, you may be asked to uh, mark only a specific number of answers instead of all of them. Also keep in mind that uh, when you are solving multiple choice questions, both types of multiple choice type questions, uh, rather than working out the answer from scratch, you can always substitute uh, the options in place of the answer in the given question and work out the solution that way. A lot of times this actually turns out to be the quicker approach. And finally, the fourth type of question is the numeric entry type of question, where instead of options for the answer, you're just given, you're just given a blank space, uh, where you write your, write whatever answer you get. So in this kind, you really just have to work it out from scratch. Um, you can't use the, substitution uh, shortcut for this. These questions may sometimes ask you to round off your answer to a specific uh, decimal point. So uh, keep an eye out for that and make sure your answer is rounded off correctly. A really important part of the GRE quant section is the data interpretation set of questions. In this set, you're given some form of data in the form of tables or graphs or pie charts or other uh, forms of data presentation, followed by a number of questions about that given data. Now the data can contain a lot of specific little details, but don't waste your time going through all of them. At the beginning, just briefly look through the data, understand what it's about. Once you get an idea, move on to the questions. You really only need to focus on the specific aspects of the data that you're going to need to answer the questions only, and not more than that. Also pay special attention to the units of measurements uh, that are used in the data. You're not allowed to carry your own calculator inside the exam. 
but you are given this basic on screen calculator you shouldn't really need the calculator too often but make sure you have all the functions of the buttons memorized and that you're familiar with all of the buttons especially the memory function buttons those can come uh, really handy this transfer display button especially can be really helpful it is used in the numeric entry type of questions to transfer whatever number you have uh, you currently have in your calculator display to the blank directly and also another thing to remember is that the calculator follows the PEMDAS convention of uh, order of uh, operations. So first let's go through some do's and don'ts for preparing for the quant section. So the first thing you should do is go back to our GRE Bible which is the official uh, GRE guide published by the ETS. Apart from having some sample questions for every kind of, uh, every type of question, the ETS book also has this section called the math review section. So this is basically just a small uh, short textbook kind of thing for all the math concepts that you're going to need for the GRE. It's a good topic wise reference guide for everything that you need to know to solve the questions. Practice everything, no matter how simple it is, no matter how obvious it may seem. Whether a question asks for something as simple as the area of a circle or the square root of 25, don't skip it. When you're in an actual test environment with the pressure of a time limit on you, you never know what obvious formula, what simple formula will is going to slip your mind and skipping these questions during your practice sessions will only make this worse. Get familiar with the language and the framing of the GRE math questions. A lot of this comes down to your choice of practice material. In my opinion, you should you really shouldn't bother uh, practicing with material that has eight questions set by Indian. When I say this, I'm actually talking specifically about uh, you know, materials given by coaching classes and the like. While these materials are helpful for testing your knowledge of the concepts, you will find that uh, more often than not, it's the language that's used is exactly the same as what you're used to seeing in your school or college math exams. American exams have a slightly different way of uh, framing questions uh, for maths and hiding little details in them that are necessary to solve the question. So you'd be much better off uh, using material that actually caters to that. So material like Manhattan Prep, Kaplan, Barron's, Princeton, uh, any of these are good. I personally prefer uh, Manhattan Prep and Kaplan. This way you get used to the language, the standard notation and the kind of assumptions that you're supposed to make reducing the chances of any misinterpretation of uh, the question. Coming to problem solving strategies, obviously the, you can't use a fixed set of rules for uh, all the questions, the kind of questions that you're going to encounter, but there are some broad strategies for different types of questions. A really helpful resource for getting to know these strategies is actually published on the ETS website. I've put the link for that in the description box. You need to manage your time effectively. You have 35 minutes uh, to solve each quant section, right? So spend the first 30 minutes actually going through every problem and solving one by one. And then uh, reserve the last five minutes to come back to uh, to come back and review all of your questions and make sure everything that you've marked is right. Now the quant section isn't as scary or intimidating as the verbal section, right? So in fact, you might look at uh, some of the questions and say, hey, this is ridiculously easy. But then why do people lose marks in it? Well, there's several reasons for that. So here's some things that you should watch out for when you're doing the quant section in the actual test. Number one is panic. So there's a 35 minute time limit on each quant section. And in your hurry to get everything done and out of the way, you might rush through the uh, questions and uh, this basically affects your reasoning and ultimately your final answer. Number two is not reading properly. I know I keep saying this over and over again, but it is actually really easy to miss out on the little details that are hidden in the question. The test makers have a, a real, real knack for uh, hiding these details in the way the question is framed. So again, rushing through the questions uh, and not reading them properly is definitely going to affect your score. Number three is overconfidence. It's very easy to just breeze through the preparation of the quant, for the quant section because you know it's so easy it's a laughing matter pretty much but don't do that complacency will never get you anywhere as i said it's very easy to for little details to slip your mind so you should definitely watch out for getting too overconfident in your mathematical abilities number four is mistyping or clicking on the wrong option 
This happens more often than you'd think. So the my solution for that would be to as have a separate section of your scrap paper to write down the answers that you get uh, as you're solving the problems. And then when you're reviewing your um, answers, make sure that refer to that list and make sure that everything that you have clicked or typed matches with that. Number five is unfamiliarity with the framing of the questions. Now I'll say this again, the GRE is an American exam. They might have different ways of framing the questions, a slightly different language that they use. So if you haven't practiced enough and from the right books, then it can be very easy to get confused by the questions. So to sum it up, uh, practice well and practice from the right books. And uh, during the actual exam, Stay cool and keep your wits about you. Remember that when the questions are this easy and basic, really the only place that you can go wrong is uh, careless errors or silly mistakes. All right, so that's it for the quant section. As always, all the resources and books that I've mentioned are linked in the description. My next video is going to be about my preparation timeline and general strategies for uh, preparing for the GRE. So stay tuned for that. And also apart from that, I'm going to be doing a lot more videos uh, in the future about uh, TOEFL, about the MS application process, about the visa process and the interview, my own interview, how to write your SOP, research. So make sure you subscribe to keep up with all of that. I'll see you soon.